What is going on, guys? This is Mia Sin. So last Saturday, we got the ban list, and it changed pretty much everything for the Thunder Dragon deck because it went from having zero Colossus to having one. If you've played the deck in the past, you would know that this is by far the best card in the deck. Being able to just shut down every searches from your opponent, it's one-sided as well. It's a little unfair. It's uh, also undestructible by battle by card effect as long as you have Thunder Dragon monster. Well, Thunder monsters, I believe, to banish from your graveyard. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty filthy card, and uh, it's also the kind of deck that can utilize Shifter or just uh, play around or rather through Shifter because it doesn't really hurt you too much. All the Thunder Dragon effects, they all trigger when they get banished. If you're playing against the Runic Stun deck, you're going to be in a really good mood. They activate Runic Tip, and then they banish your Thunder Dragon Roar or Dark, and you go plus one for absolute free, so thank you so much. I uh, would really um, love to play against those decks. <laughs> so many good matchups, honestly. This deck is looking like a very good option, this format. And there are a lot of really nasty um, combos that you can do if you're playing the combo heavy build. You can also play the pure build if you really want to, because then you can play some uh, hatchups and stuff. But with only one Colossus, I think it's a little less good. So yeah, today I'll show you guys five combos with the explosive build and uh, the deck profile as well. But before we go any further, I would really appreciate you guys if you could smash the like and subscribe button. And you know what? If this video can get to 1,000 likes, which I know we can, I will be making a really in-depth spreadsheet with just about every combo that you can imagine, playing through every hand trap you want. And of course, uh, huge shoutouts to my sponsors, Inspire TCG, as well as Dueling Guard. Check them out and use the coupon code YASIN666 for 5% off your next order. Both links will be in the description box below. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Alright, so combo number one. Again, this deck doesn't really care about Shifter for uh, obvious reasons. So if you go Normal Summon Solar and then um, your opponent Chain Shifter or your opponent Shifter you on standby, you're gonna go, okay, thank you, now my Armageddon Knight is turning into, like, the nuts. So yeah, you're gonna be banishing the Roar, and then Special Summon the Dark from the deck, and since a Thunder Monster was summoned, Solar will trigger to summon a token monster. Link Rebo is banned, so we can't go into that anymore, but it doesn't really matter, because Link Spider is the other alternative. Link, Link Rebo only really matters much when its graveyard effect is relevant, but honestly, it's rarely the case. Anyways, now we'll be going into Link Spider, and then SP Lil Knight, Chain Link 1, Thunder Dragon Dark in order to search, and then Chain Link 2 SP Lil Knight, that allows you to both chain block, and also, I mean, not, not that it matters, because your opponent could have ashed the solar. And also, you can banish the shifter so that... Uh, if you are playing Shifter yourself, then you can Shifter again afterwards. It's kind of like uh, in the Flunderese deck, when you're going Ostrich, Banish the Shifter, and then Shifter again. Um, it's really disgusting. If you do that, we can't be friends, because I hate getting Shiftered multiple times in one duel. Actually, as a matter of fact, I hate getting Shiftered once. It really makes me uh, angry. But if I play this deck, I really want to get Shiftered. Thank you. Anyways, now you're going to be searching the Thunder Dragon Hawk. And you can go Hawk in order to summon back the Dark and then Colossus, or you can simply make a um, Colossus right away with the Solar. I actually think that's a little more conservative because the search card that you get, it's not really relevant. And uh, because of the SP Lil Knight, if you rush the Colossus, you beat Nibiru regardless. So yeah, one card combo beats Nib and also summons SP. It's pretty nice. Uh, very simple, obviously. Uh, under Shifter, uh, you could be the one shiftering your opponent or your opponent could be the one shiftering you. And uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a very disgusting combo, but that's just the beginning. Let's get into combo number two. Alrighty, so combo number two, my hand has Battery Man Solar as well as Bestial Lubalion. And I think uh, if, you, if, you, if, you've, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you would know that I love playing Bestials with Battery Man Solar. It is uh, very disgusting, but uh, with, with Lubalion, you can do even nastier things. But yeah, anyways, send the Roar again, and then search the Magnemote, and then banish that. Summon Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, of course. Trying to chain block, but again, not that it matters. Summons the Dark, and then Solar summons your token, and then summon back the Lubalion by sending the Magnemote to get the regain on the field, and then link off for an IP Mascarena, and then link everything off for an Appaloosa. So again, Nibiru does not bother you whatsoever. And then the Dark is going to be searching the Hawk, and then Hawk uh, discard, revive back the, the Dark, uh, sorry, the Roar, and then summon Colossus and, and phase Magnemote, search the Baldrick. So that's like six interruptions or something like that. You got Appaloosa for three, Colossus, and then uh, Baldrake and banish something. And then when your opponent normals or special summons a monster, you ride back the Magnemote. And then you get another search on end phase and the Baldrake can tribute it and then banish uh, a monster your opponent's uh, uh, summoned uh, from the extra deck. Uh, a lot of interruptions. Again, like I said, six. And you're also drawing a card in the process because of regained. And you're getting another end phase search. Uh, the Colossus is just like a pain. If your opponent's trying to uh, destroy that, you banish the Roar and then you summon a monster from the deck, or you can also banish the Dark and Surge. Banish the Hawk and then mulligan your hand, potentially draw into hand traps if you play any. 
So yeah, a lot of uh, potential options, which is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, let's get into combo number three. All right, combo number three, uh, yet again, another 100% Nibiru proof hand. I mean, every single combo in this deck beats Nibiru. Uh, you don't need cards like Baron to negate it. Uh, obviously, that's the option for people with like an IQ of seven, right? When the only way you can beat hat shops is when you negate them. But what about, you know, being smart and... Uh, managing your resources correctly by, you know, not playing into it and always having a backup plan in case you do get Nibiru'd. So my hand has Solar, Saronir, as well as Assault Synchron. If the Saronir is a Lubelion, what uh, changes actually is that you're also going to be getting the end phase search because you're not going to be searching Saronir, but rather search the Magnemote. Uh, but Saronir is the second best bestial monster to draw, uh, which is the reason why it's a three of, right? And Lubelion is obviously a three of in this deck. I, again, I will be showing the deck profile in depth at the end. Yeah, very good uh, combo, Assault Synchron being a level 2 tuner that you can special summon from your hand for free. But his graveyard effect is remarkable because uh, in the graveyard, if a face-up dragon synchro monster you control is tributed or banished, so, you know, if it gets Nibiru'd, you can banish this card from a grave and target one of those monsters, special summon it. So it's a, a great way to recover from Nibiru, of course. Anyways, normal summon solar, and then yet again, you're going to be uh, sending the roar, and then ba um, banish it in order to summon the Saronir, Chilling Kwan, summon the dark, and then solar effect trigger uh, to summon the token. Uh, we are now at summon number 5 after we summon the, the Assault Synchron. But if we get Nibiru'd, what's going to happen is that the Dark will trigger, star, surge the Hawk, and then you're, uh, you can go Hawk effect, revive back the, the Roar, and then make a Nibiru. So, uh, sorry, the, the Colossus. So you can still make Colossus with like a lot of built-in protection through Nibiru, so it doesn't really matter too much. But if your opponent doesn't Nibiru here and tries to may maybe see what you're going to do, uh, it's fine. You don't have to go into an Appaloosa because you can actually make a really big board. Uh, Martial Metal Marcher, revive back the Assault Synchron. Again, same situation if your opponent nibs us. Uh, we can still go uh, Dark, Surge, the Hawk, etc. Yeah, Axel Synchro Stardust, Chilling Kuan, Chilling Two, send the Lubelion with the Saronir, and revive back the Assault Synchron with the Axel Synchro. And then we can make a Bistool Dispatter using the Axel as well as the Assault Synchron. And this does matter because now we've got a monster that we can send with the Lubelion in order to revive it back. But first, we're going to be making an Omega, and that is kind of relevant. And now at this point, because we are linking off, or rather synchroing off using the Dark, we can search the Hawk. And then we're going to be going Lubelion, Revive Back, and then Axel Synchro, Revive Back the Dispatter. Again, if we get Nibiru, we can also chain the Omega, so that's uh, even worse for our opponent. And then Lubelion is going to be placing the Regain, so at this point, if we get Nibiru, it's even worse, because Regain also Revive Back the Dispatter. Uh, Omega, rip one card from her opponent's hand, and then regained, uh, shuffle it back if it's a light or dark monster. So if you're playing against a deck like Voices, Voice, or Despia, for example, it's gonna hurt a lot. Yeah, like, uh, unless you banish Tragedy, then uh, it's gonna be a tragedy for you. But yeah, anyways, Omega, revive back off of this batter. That's uh, a little disgusting because you get to potentially banish two cards from your opponent's hand permanently. And we're gonna be doing it again. So yeah, it's a hand loop for two on top of making a really big board. And then you can link off your two useless monsters for IP Masker and our, or SP. It doesn't really matter too much. And then the Hawk, revive back the Roar, and then make the Colossus, and then end phase. Uh, again, if you had Lubelion, you would have been able to search the Magnemot, or else it's uh, it's fine. You just don't search, but you still have all that with a Handloop for two. That's a lot of interruptions, by the way. IP into SP, that's two interruptions, because the Regain can revive back your Saronir. And then the Dispatter can negate or destroy and you still have the Colossus with the Omega. So that's uh, one, two, uh, three, four, four interruptions with a hand loop for two. Yeah, so your opponent has four cards in hand against four interruptions. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little disgusting. Yeah, enjoy those uh, pre-preparation of Rites and Sephira that you can't use. Oh man, must not be nice playing against this card, huh? Alrighty, so what happens when you don't draw, you know, Battery Man Solar or Axel Synchro and your hand is just a little whack? Well, don't worry, because there's always a way to play it out. So my hand has Chaos Space, Lubelion, Double, Thunder Dragon, Dark, as well as a useless Triple Tactic Talents. It doesn't really matter too much. So I'll first, uh, I'll start with a Chaos Space, discard the Dark. I even if we get Ashed, it doesn't matter, because we can go Lubelion, discard, search a Bestial, and then banish that Dark, and then we can still make, like, a Colossus and everything. But yeah, Lubelion is gonna now search the Magnemote, and then Magnemote banish the Dark, and then uh, Chilling Quan, Chilling 2, right? And then somewhat beat uh, Ash, but not really. And then revive back the Lubelion, and then place the Regained again, and then banish the Magnemote for the White Dragon Rival Burster. At this point, the Regain can draw one card. We have the Chaos Space for the second Baby Dragon, so it's fine. We don't have to waste it. Uh, I mean, we don't have to hold it. Uh, summon the Black Dragon Collab Serpent, and then obviously, uh, speaking of the Devil, put it back on the bottom of the deck, draw one card. So that when we link off the Black Dragon Collab Serpent, it'll also be able to search its brother. Uh, this used to be less relevant when they were both at three, but now that it, they're both at one, it does matter. Anyways, normal summon solar effect that we just drew, 
doesn't really matter too much. It's just uh, gonna allow us to extend, but even if we didn't have it, it's fine. Uh, now, revive back the Roar with the Hawk, which again triggers it in order to get the Battery Man token on the field. And then Synchro off using Chaos Angel, even though we have no Tutor Monsters. And this is a Light and Dark Chaos Angel, so everything is undestructible by battle, and all the Synchros are unaffected by monster effects. So again, Nibiru does even less than nothing, but Nibiru did nothing since day one because of the Hawk, so it's fine. And then, of course, we're going to be linking off into IP Masquerina, and then we can make the Colossus using that Roar. And during the end phase, the Magna Mode searches, so five freaking cards in hand, and a really, really oppressive board. Hieratic Seal, IP Masquerina, Colossus, and Chaos Angel. The Chaos Angel on its, in itself is enough to beat uh, Far King, because they have no inherent out to it, other than the Sinful Spores of Subversion Snake Eye, which is a searchable card that nobody plays, or they have to sack like Imperm or um, Triple Tactic Talents if they play it, and you can just not use any monster effects if you feel like they have it, if they don't use Imperm right away, then you know for a fact that they don't have it, and nobody plays Underworld Goddess either, so yeah. <laughs> this card is basically Exodia against the best deck of the format, which is really good for you, actually. But either way, I mean, with Thunder Dragon Colossus, no, nothing really matters, like, people are gonna scoop to that regardless, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice deck you got there again. This is ridiculous, like, every hand can lead to stuff like that. Even without the Solar, the only difference is that we wouldn't have had the IP Masquerade and the Chaos Angel, but we still have the uh, Hieratic Seal and the Colossus, and potentially still the Mascarina if we use cards from our hand. So yeah, it's um, yeah, no, it's just free. It's, uh, this deck is too good, what can I say? But yeah, that's it for this one. Let's get into the fifth and final combo now. Alrighty, so my hand this time is a little bad. I have uh, Assault Synchron, Farina, Far oh, yeah, yeah, oh my god, I, I feel like I'm DB Grinder now. Uh, Pharaonic Sarcophagus, not Pharasonic Sarcophagus. And we also have Duamutef, uh, Thunder Dragon Dark, as well as another useless Triple Tactic Talents. I, I love drawing this card just to, just to show you that, uh, you know, if you get a hand shaft and you still are able to push, then that Talents can be even better. But yeah, whatever. So the first play is Pharaonic Sarcophagus, discard the Duamutef in order to send the Happy. Uh, we have a very high likelihood of sending uh, Imseti with Zombie Vampire, so that's the reason why we're not doing that. And then Zombie Vampire, Mill Form. Uh, we're only milling Saronir and nothing else of value. Uh, so we're reviving uh, back the Saronir, and then Axel Synchro, uh, summon from hand, Chilling 1, Chilling 2, so send the Lubelion, and then revive back the Axel, and then a, a Synchro off for Abyssal Dispatter. But we can't go for Lubelion right away, because then we play into Nibiru. Uh, so if we want to beat, uh, beat Nibiru here, uh, the smart thing is to discard the Dark and then send the Emseti, and then revive back the Emseti, and then make an SP Little Knight. And this is where SP is just like insanely broken. Because in this deck, even if you have zero bestials, if you got like Horus cards and you have ways to get the Darks and the Roars and the Grave and everything, your SP can banish your Thunder Dragons from your own Grave, and then you can trigger their effects. And if we get nibiru we can go Chain SP, banish the SP and the Dispatter, and we're, we're good from Nibiru. And it really doesn't hurt you whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, now we are going to be going Lubelion, and then get back the Dispatter with the Axel Synchro. And then Lubelion plays the Regain, so again, we are still Nibiru-proof. We were always Nibiru-proof with this combo, it's ridiculous. And then Dispatter revive back the Axel Synchro, and we are going to be Synchroing into Chaos Angel now. So both these two cards are now uh, unaffected by opponent's monster effects, because Chaos Angel is yet again light and dark, and all of our monsters are undestructible by battle, so your opponent can't even go battle phase, run over SP, main phase to play the game. No, 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 no. And because that wasn't enough, obviously we're going to be going Hawk, revive back the Dark, and then go into a Colossus. Uh, I don't believe there was another Thunder Dragon monster, so we couldn't have revive back something else in order to keep something for the Dispatter, but it's fine. Uh, it's just a matter of time before something will get banished, and then when we go SP, we can banish our opponent's monster, and then Dispatter negates something by using our opponent's monster, which feels... Very disgusting, because then, you know, he's not getting back the monster banish with SP, it's basically a permanent neg uh, permanent banish, and then this is a negate, so that's very filthy, again, considering the fact that we also have Colossus, and this was a very weak hand, no solar, and honestly, just bare minimum, uh, bare minimum, bare minimum things, we didn't even open a single bestial monster, we had to mail the Saronier, and we were still able to end on all of that, so, yeah, very beautiful, uh, this deck is just insane, there's always a way to play it out. But yeah, that's it for the combos, let's get into the deck profile now. Alrighty, so for the deck list, and again, before we proceed, friendly reminder to smash the like and subscribe button, you guys are the best. Uh, but yeah, the best card in the main deck would be Battery Man Solar, this card is insane. You can also play Armageddon Knight and Dark Ref and stuff, but 
I don't really recommend it because then you have too many normal summons, too, too many cards that do the same thing, and Battery Man Solar is objectively better than all of them. So you might as well just rely on Solar being your only normal summon. Uh, so you either draw this card or you revive it back off of Zombie, uh, Zombie Vampire. And, you know, you're playing 3 Mseti with 3 Sarcophagus. Uh, so the odds of seeing this card, relatively high, but worst case, you can always play without it. I've showed combos without Battery Man Solar, obviously. Uh, you can find ways to, like, pitch Thunder Dragon Monsters uh, into the grave and then banish them with your Bestials. That's how you're playing regardless. So, yeah, this is a Bestial uh, Horus Thunder Dragon deck, basically. It's not like a pure Thunder Dragon deck in any way. But yeah, for the actual Thunder Dragon Monsters, I'm on 3 Dark with Double Roar, Double Hawk. No regular Thunder Dragon. That card is only really good if you're playing Danger Monsters. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty bad. And the Egg, uh, the Egg would be good in the pure build if you're also playing, like, Instant Fusion... Ready Fusion, all those cards, then I would say, yeah, sure, it makes sense. But in this build, uh, the Egg and the regular Thunder Dragon are really, really bad. Um, uh, 3 Dark, I actually like it. Uh, first of all, this card is a uh, hand shop, quote-unquote, against the uh, Purely and Labyrinth deck because you can interrupt their quick effect. Um, if they're going like a trap card and they have Lady, then you can chain Dark so that they don't set a trap card with the Lady. Or if you are playing against Purely, it's the same thing, right? They have a Purely Xyz rank 2. And then they use a pure, uh, purely memory, and then you chain the dark, and then they don't get to attach, and then set the uh, uh, purely yeep, obviously, uh, off of the uh, purely noir, uh, e purely noir. Uh, so yeah, dark is, is good, but also it's the fact that you're getting a dark in your grave, and then you're searching another dark. So not only can you now use any thunder monster in order to go into Colossus, but also on your own turn, you can banish, uh, if you're using this on your opponent's end phase, for example... You can now banish your uh, Dark uh, with your Bestial, and then you can uh, start playing the game from there. So it is one of the best cards on its own, even though it doesn't really do anything on its own, uh, technically. Uh, Double Roar, this card is kind of like a brick in your hand, but it is a very good card to discard off of Imseti and uh, Sarcophagus. And if you can find a way to, like, tribute summon this card, and then uh, special summon the Assault Synchron, uh, you're also in a very good position, and it's a very good card to link off. And then Double Hawk, obviously this is... Uh, extender, it's not a great card to draw if you have nothing else, but it, again, you could also at any moment mail your Thunder Dragons with Zombie Vampire, so it's uh, it ends up uh, being uh, fine. Uh, if you really want to, you can cut Roar or Hawk to 1, so that you play less Thunder Dragon Bricks, and also Dark maybe to 2. It's really up to you, though. For the Bestial Monsters, Triple Saronier, Triple Lubelion, and then one of each Magnemote, Jewish Worm, Baldrick, I actually think these ratios are optimal. And then one regain, so yeah, it gets uh, doesn't get any cleaner than that, I want to say. And again, for the Horus Monsters, also very clean. Triple Imseti, Triple Sarcophagus, really trying to uh, maximize the likelihood of getting access to Zombie Vampire. And Zombie Vampire is one of those uh, monsters that allows SP Lone Knight to have that bonus banish effect. And then one uh, Happy, as well as one Duamutef. And then one of each of the baby dragons, as well as Chaos Space. So Chaos Space, the only search targets would be Lubalion, as well as the baby dragons. If you really want to, you can try to squeeze in a Chaos Dragon Levy near. It's just that it doesn't really do anything if you don't have a stacked graveyard. So it's only great when you're already playing the game. But what I really do like about Levy near is that you can crash your Dark the Dark Charmer and then search Levy near. And then in Main Feast 2, you can summon Levy near and then just blow up a board or revive back a monster because you're playing so many light and dark monsters. And obviously, Levinir banish some Thunder Dragon monsters is absolutely disgusting. It is extremely good. But again, there's only one Colossus, so we have less ways of getting access to ranking monsters. Even though there is a Horus package, you can't always rely on these cards. But yeah. Uh, and finally, we got also the three Assault Synchron for Synchro Summoning. And the Graveyard Effect is, again, how you beat Nibiru very, very easily. As well as three copies of Triple Tactic Talents and three Imperium. Uh, the talents, I actually think it's very good because it's always good going first and second. If you get a hand shop, then use talents and then you just keep playing the game. And going second, you just either steal a monster, look at your opponent's hand, or draw two cards. Infinite Impermanence, though, I actually think it's less good. You can probably live without it and maybe play more engine cards because this deck is kind of like Pendulum decks. So you really want to have as much gas as possible. But this card, at least, is a safe hand shop and it doesn't turn on triple tactic talents and call by. But it can be hit by cross out. Uh, because the Bistool monsters, nobody's going to have cross-out for them. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, something to keep into consideration. But yeah, 40 card deck list. Again, the only things that would potentially change would be the three Imperms. Maybe one less copy of Hawk or one less copy of Roar. One less Dark. It's really up to you. But everything else I actually think is just like, I wouldn't touch anything. For the extra deck, I also think the extra deck is pretty good. One Colossus, obviously, that's all we can do at the moment. There's a massive difference between 1, 2, and 3 Colossus, by the way. It changes everything. 
But yeah, obviously if this card ever goes back to three, I am definitely playing this card, uh, this deck in every single event. You already know it. But yeah, Chaos Angel, yeah, another uh, very overpowered card in this deck. So easy to go into a Chaos Angel. You can use Solar as well as Roar uh, or Abyssal, and then it's a Light or Dark, and then Assault Synchron with Lubalion, Light and Dark, using no tuners. I mean, in this situation, you are using a tuner, but you don't have to, right? There's just so many uh, possibilities. Even the Baby Dragons with Abyssals. Uh, you don't even need, like, a light and a dark. You can use, like, two lights or two darks, and it's still fine. Every path leads to Rome. And then Bistool the Spouter, another extremely good card. You can easily make this card thanks to Axel Synchro Starter's Dragon. Allows you to Synchro Climb. And once you summon the Bistool the Spouter, the game kind of just ends. Uh, you can do so much. You can revive back the Omega that banished a card from your opponent's hand, and then banish another card again. And then negate your opponent's cards, and then destroy and everything. It's really unfair. And then, obviously, Axel Synchro... Uh, Manadome Trisukta, this card is not really there to keep synchroing up, uh, but rather you, uh, you can use Battery Man Solar and Axel Synchro start, uh, Axel, uh, sorry, Assault Synchron to still make a Colossus, so even if this, uh, this combination of, uh, hand can allow you to play, you go Normal Sun Solar, send the Roar, and then Special Summon the Assault Synchron, and then make the Manadome Trisukta, and then revive back the Axe, uh, Assault, and then you make an SP and then banish your Roar and then, uh, or, or Dark and then you Surge the Hawk and then you make Colossus. So yeah, it's a, it's a necessity, but it's not the kind of card that you're going into very, very often. But it's still a good card uh, nonetheless. And then Martial Metal Marcher because of uh, Assault Synchron and the level 1 token that you get from uh, Battery Man Solar. Zombie Vampire, obviously Appaloosa to beat Nibiru. Uh, Access Code Talker for removal. This card could also be... I don't know, it could be it could be a, a lot of things, honestly. It could even be like the second SP, whatever, or like Underworld Goddess, doesn't really matter too much. Dark, the Dark Charmer, this card's really good, and also being able to crash the Dark is relevant, but there's not that many Dark Monsters that you can currently search. I mean, uh, Assault Synchron is one of them, but that's about all I can really see. I mean, the Thunder Dragon Monsters, they're not like insane to search. Uh, you can't search Black Dragon, Collapse Serpent, or Emseti, unfortunately, so that's a little bit of an inconvenience. And then SP, IP, Hieratic Seal, obviously, as well as Striker Dragon for the Baby Dragons. So that when you use Chaos Space, you've got a guaranteed Hieratic Seal with two cards in your hand. You're searching the second baby, and you're drawing a card off of Chaos Space, so that's not too bad. For the idea section, because there are a lot, you can play Darkest Diabolos if you really want to, because it recurs itself back every time you summon Colossus, but you're only really summoning it once because, again, it's limited, so that's the reason why I'm not really too fond of this card. Um, uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon of Armageddon with Chaos Dragon Levineer, and if you really want to, Melody of Awakening Dragon. It is pretty nice, but again, it's just a lot of win more cards that are very hard to summon. They're really insane if you pull them off, but they're just gonna make your deck brick a little too much. So I'm not really uh, a fan of these cards. Now, a package that I actually think is really good, but it's very... Ah, uh, it's just really hard to fit in because the extra deck is super tight. It would be Ready Fusion with Sandwich, level 6 Dark Monster. Uh, so you can use it with Assault Synchron to climb into the spatter because you go into Axel into the spatter. Uh, or you can use um, Alvain, which is a level 2 tuner. Replaces Assault Synchron, so when you can summon a Bestial or the Roar, you can also make it a spatter that way. Or you can play Kaminari Attack because if you got Ready Fusion, right... With any Thunder Dragon monster here, you can make Titan, and then uh, Dark will surge the Hawk, or uh, Roar will uh, summon the Dark, and then you can link off the, the Dark and something else, and then surge the Hawk, and then make a Colossus. Um, it's just that the Titan itself doesn't really do anything on your hand. I guess it can remove, like, it, it can be a board breaker, but you don't even play that many Thunder effects in your hand. Again, it, this is not the pure build. If it was, then it would have been really insane, but because, you know, you have Thunder Dragon and the Egg, but it's not, so this card's less good. Uh, yeah. uh, also, you can play Blackwing Sharnga, the Wanning Moon. It, it is, again, just like Assault Synchron, a free special summon if you got a dark monster. Oh, sorry, if there is a monster with 2,000 or more attack on the field. So it's pretty nice, and you can make the Blackwing Full Armor Master with it. And then Underworld Goddess, the second SP, like I said. Gold Sarcophagus, Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial, not too great. Gold Sark, you can banish the dark, and that's a one-card Colossus, because then you surge the Hawk. It's, it's not, like, super explosive, and it, when your hand is already good, Gold Sarcophagus doesn't do anything whatsoever. If this card was a 3, I would still probably not consider it, though. I, it wouldn't be, like, that insane. But against the stun decks, Gold Sark can be, like, a card that, you know, you can banish, like, Duster or Cosmic Cyclone, and then you get back eventually. So, that, it's it's cute. You know, there's, like, niche applications for Gold Sark. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, and then, yeah, whatever, Call by the Grave doesn't really matter too much. I, I guess you kind of lose to, like, some hand shops sometimes, depending on your hand, but it's really not the end of the world. And again, with three copies of T uh, TTT, you can break boards. And 
uh, somewhat recover from hand shops. And then finally, if you want more tuners, Ringo Worm, the Dragon Guarding the 100 Apples, really ridiculous name. It's only really good when you draw this and Solar and Abyssal, so I don't really recommend it too much. And then tuning if you want more copies of Assault Synchron. Tuning also has that effect that makes you send the top card from your deck to the grave after searching the Assault Synchron, which can be relevant. Uh, you can foolish like a, a Thunder Dragon monster and then your bestials are like really explosive now. But I mean, it's really up to you. And uh, this card does make you lose to Drool a little bit harder. So I'm not a really big fan of that. I want to beat Drool and Yibiru as often as possible. And the other hand shafts, I want to say they're really not too bad, especially like Valor and stuff. Imperm on Colossus can be a little rough if they hold it. The rest of your board isn't doing nothing. And again, if Colossus ever goes back to two, which <laughs> I hope it doesn't happen, but if you're a Thunder Dragon player, you, you better pray it does. Uh, this deck is going to be a real problem because now even if your opponent holds the Imperm, he's still going to die. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but let me know your thoughts about Thunder Dragon in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.